this music life is overwhelming, you know, it's crazy. And uh, I just got back from a tour and I was basically tour managing myself and it's, uh, it's, it's nuts. I'm just being a dick and that was, yeah, my middle finger to the cancer culture and just to keep that freedom of expression when it comes to music if you're an artist. Maybe do a strike like the actors did in America and the screen, yeah, the, the I, right. I, my help, yeah. <laughs> I always wonder, I always wonder why we are not doing that. I don't know. I feel like we are scared, you know, we're more scared. It, it would be great, you know, let's team up, let's, uh, <laughs> let's uh, you know, strike. <laughs> Today we got an incredible lineup with both very different artists but equally as interesting. Uh, we have rapper ADK, MC, performer, songwriter. Nice to meet you, Play. How you doing? Good, good, good. Chill. Nice to meet you. And from the world of jazz and electronic fusion, we got the incredibly talented Maria Chiara Arguiro. Did I pronounce it properly? Uh, not quite, but uh, I'm used to it. I'm used to it. I'm used to it. <laughs> Give us the right pronunciation, yeah. though. Maria Chiara Argiro. Argiro. I would just Fantastic. Call you, I would just call you Maria. I think that's easier for me for now. <laughs> that's, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so welcome, Maria. How are things today? Good, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Nice to have you here as well. Um, so before we dive into music and experiences... We're going to start at the beginning. ADK. What does ADK stand for? Oh, that will never come out. Retirement song. Uh, that's the, that's okay. the mystery. That's the, the mystery, that's okay. The, yeah, that's the magic. <laughs> Can't give it away yet. Yeah. So what first got you into music? Uh, I always kind of had a thing for songwriting. I used to try and sing at the beginning when I was very, very young. So say, I don't know, eight to, to ten. And then puberty hit and the voice got fucked. So I was like, no, we need to find some other shit. Then I got introduced to 50 Cent in the club. That was the first rap song I've seen. And uh, Will Smith's Party Starter. And these two just got me on it. I was like, yeah, I love the, the attitude, the style and everything. And I came from an environment or a background like a very regular Arabic background in the 90s. So as a kid, I was silenced a lot. There was not a lot of room to speak. We have a lot of hierarchy in society. You need to listen to the elders. Da, 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 don't talk back, all of this. Uh, so rap was kind of of my, well, little escape. I can write and say whatever I want and basically say the stuff that I wish I could have said, but I couldn't say mm. in certain situations. And that's also where ADK comes from. He's sort of my alter ego. Like in uh, real life, I'm very chill, laid back, whatever. And then if you listen to some of my music, it's quite the opposite of that. And he's just the, the part of me that I keep hidden from society, but still exists in a sense. Cool. And so... You mentioned your background a bit, but you you were born in Qatar? Yes, I was born in Qatar. And then you moved to the UK? I moved to the UK when I was about 17, so all my raising years and basically the molding years were in Qatar. And now you live in Groningen? Now I live in Groningen. Of yeah. all places? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you've also performed in all these different places. So yeah. how did these early performances shape your approach to the stage? Uh, Qatar was very different from here in terms of just even acceptance of the art form in the first place because uh, when I came up in Qatar the rap scene was practically non-existent and mm. we were part of the first groups that built sort of the rap scene in Qatar. We started with better rap, we used to just meet in the malls and you have a circle of 20 motherfuckers just cussing at each other and mm. a lot of times we got stopped and we had to organize house parties and such just to liven the scene up but Everybody's against it. The music industry is against it. The adults were against it. It's just very looked down upon. Uh, so to get to even perform in Qatar, you had to, of course, have some certain connections or to really get the right spot at the right time to be able to perform. And I remember for rap, it was difficult in a sense. We were not allowed to use any cuss words. So if you're mm. going to perform to the public, it has to be all clean, which... Wasn't my favorite, but it did help me a lot with my writing. Cause like, to, like Will Smith, because he never cussed in his songs. So. Sort of, yes, yes. But <laughs> yeah. not on purpose. Yeah. I wanted to cuss, but oh, okay, couldn't yeah. have that happen. So we <laughs> yeah. had to basically, like, it, it helps with vocabulary and how to just not resort to the easiest thing to say, yeah. in a sense. 
and just the the scene like it was cool for the younger people but of course most of the older people were very against it so Qatar it was not a very accepting scene but that also just drove me more I was always a stubborn person so that was like yeah I'm gonna keep going yeah. uh, England is when I started being more introduced to like uh, artists from different backgrounds uh, some jazz artists some musicians other rappers who did different sorts of rap also English grime rap or grime basically when I was in England was a very big scene so I got to see a lot of a lot of basically other fields and how they operate and could kind of pick like cherry pick from that what I like and what I don't like and just keep it within my style and that's where I met also some of my closest musician friends in uh, England and just worked on a lot of stuff I used to always try to be the angry rapper before but then when I opened up my eyes a bit more and started working with more musicians I learned how to bring the music element more into the rap rather than just spitting 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 yeah. and uh, Groninga love it love it here it's a very it's a melting pot there's artists from everywhere mostly they come here as students and the art is a side thing and then you start meeting a lot of these and form certain collectives this is how my collective Northern Lights were formed mm. to just random artists who met some DJs some rappers and like okay we're gonna make that collective yeah. Uh, and everyone is just so willing to cooperate or just meet up and try and work on a song and just the environment is very laid back and very easy there and there's enough chances to also perform and uh, network and the organizations there for a small city they run it very well so as an upcoming artist you do have a lot of opportunities over there and that was great so this is I'd say well I went from non-acceptance mm -hmm. in Qatar when it came to the art form. Now it's a bit more open-minded, of course, and it's popular there. Uh, to full acceptance in Groningen, and yeah, it's just all the sides of the spectrum, I'd say. Uh, to you, Maria. So you have this really unique blend of jazz, classical and electronical elements. Uh, you've been a part of the London scene for a while now, because you're originally from Rome, as mentioned. So what led you to explore these different genres, and how did you develop your sound? So, I mean, um, I started playing piano since, you know, I was very, very early age. Uh, my mom, she's a dance teacher. And so she basically like, encouraged me to explore and study music since, you know, I was, I was a kid. And, uh, and then, you know, back in Rome, back in Italy, because I'm originally from Rome, I, I did, you know, the classical, you know, studies where, you know, you play, you know, classical music. And uh, around the age of 12, 13, I started like playing in a jazz band in this school I was, you know, attending and uh, I fall in love, you know, with this music and I start being very like geeky about it. And uh, so it was quite early, I think, to to start with mm -hmm. such a such a intense and difficult, uh, I would say, like uh, genre of music. Mm -hmm. And then I, you know, I continue like playing with lots of friends and uh, I suppose I decided at some point that I wanted to make music and I found myself a bit stuck in Italy. Um, so I wanted to explore, I wanted to find uh, also um, more like, you know, uh, friends and colleagues that, that were really like, you know, uh, thriving into, mm. into the music, the music, uh, not even industry, I'm not talking industry because I'm just learning about industry now. <laughs> Uh, but, but like, you know, like they had this passion and I, f I don't know, for some reason, um, maybe now that things are, are obviously different, different, but like more now than 10 years ago, I mean, I decided to move out of, of, of Italy because I wanted to make this, I wanted to mm. be a musician, I wanted to be a full-time artist and, uh, and I'm so happy that I, uh, obviously like, you know, I moved out, but I, I kind of, you know, moving out of your own country, I think, opens new horizons. And um, uh, I think it's very important to, you know, as, as, as you mentioned as well, is like to encounter new cultures and, uh, and um, learning from new experiences that, for example, London or the UK can offer you. And mm. it's obviously completely different culture here. So I... I moved to London and I studied a bit more like, you know, in-depth jazz. And uh, and now, like, you know, I, I've 
since then I've been, you know, doing a lot of different, different things, completely mm. different from jazz to electronic to classical to, you know, uh, post-rock to art rock, art rock uh, projects. And uh, and that's what I, I really wanted. I wanted to be involved. I wanted to meet people from all over the world. And it's something that maybe in Italy I didn't, at the time, I didn't have the opportunity to encounter all these cultures and uh, it's something that for me has always been so important that really feeds into into who I am and into like the music so the fact that I'm you know my best friends can be like Venezuelan or Mm. Chilean or uh, you know Spanish or Greek or from London Uh, it's it's I think it's it's amazing and gave me a lot of energy to uh, explore my own you know uh, sound because that's for me it's is what you know, like it, it's kind of been like the main theme of my life, my music life. It was like always like find who you are uh, since I was a little kid, you know, like uh, uh, why I didn't want to do, for example, the conservatoire straight away. Like it, that was the first choice. And I said to my mom, no, I want to go first in a different school, which is a bit more like alternative school and mm-hmm. explore, you know, a different routes. And I think London kind of, gave me this opportunity also to to be super open and uh, to almost welcoming like you know all these experiences because you are like literally like uh, it's it's a continuous experience here like and uh, and so that's why I my my music it's it's basically you know I you know, I train as a jazz pianist, but I am also like produce music. I do a lot of electronic music at the moment. I I sing a lot mm. more, uh, and um, and I think it's it's. Uh, it, I don't know if it's the city. I don't know if it's your personality, but I met a lot of people that encouraged me to explore all these you know different. Roots, you know, uh, and 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 way of being a musician. Uh, I'm a musician from Rome. I live in London. I don't know if it's the city again. I never. I I cannot say. Yeah. Uh, but but it's been good for me to, you know, move out uh, my country uh, and explore uh, a different a different kind of life. You know. So do you feel that you found your sound, or has it been an ongoing evolution? Yeah, obviously it has been an ongoing evolution for you. No. Yeah, it's ongoing, and I will never say I officially found my sound because I will be, I will basically like will stop doing music. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, so I think it's it's an ongoing process, and uh, and I'm very open to explore and uh, you know new routes all the time. And uh, it's it's hard to be an artist, and it's hard to say. I'm done, you know, especially yeah. nowadays. So it's uh, it's 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 good to. I mean, for me, it's a trick as well to say like, okay, I move on, new things. Yeah. What's next? <laughs> yeah. I think it's a, it's a good challenge, and um, and it's been ongoing in my life to always like kind of challenging uh, uh, myself uh, again, like moving moving out of you know mm. your country is already like a big step. That yeah. I encourage everyone, you know, if they have the opportunity, because it's an opportunity to yeah. do. Yeah. Nice, nice to hear. So let's dive into your music a bit more. This song was not on your album, but uh, I was research- researching you on your Instagram mm. and other places. But and I found this song "Call on Me," and it was for your sister. Yeah. And uh, I really enjoyed the song. Appreciate I, I, it. Can, I, I'm not sure if we can listen to it, but um, Bruno. <laughs> Bruno, <What's> it <laughs> it's on Instagram. I don't know if you can. It's only on Instagram, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell us about this song. Call, call on me for your sister. Yeah, uh, call on me was for my sister's uh, wedding. Due to like personal circumstances and stuff, I had to do over here. I was not. Mm, I could not be available for my sister's wedding, which was quite a hit to me. It, it really affected me I was very sad about it and I thought the only way I can be there was to make her a song and she's always been also a fan of my music even Mm. other people didn't support so I felt like it's a very intense process for me had to actually sit down and think about what I'm gonna say the memories I'm gonna bring up how to bring it about rather than just writing a song because I I write a lot of songs and now Mm. I get a lot of features and some people are like, you know, let's make a party song, all of that. And that's quite an easy song to make. 
Yeah. And then um, this one was, yeah, took some time, took uh, a lot of self-exploration and thinking. And mm, yeah, that one right there on the left. And yeah, it was presented in her wedding and I could see that made her very happy and she cried about it and I was on the other screen crying in yeah. Groningen. And I also edited the video myself, which was very simple edit, but that seemed like a very big test to me. I'm not very technical. Yeah. But uh, there's the song. Uh, she can call on me whenever she wants. Has commenced. This is a gift. Proceed to this as you wish. Been. The proudest tell the brother get to see you grow A crib in my parents room to a home of your own And you know what they say and you gon' reap what you saw And you done saw the lot of good I hope you reap it all Happiness from the moment you have become a baby Even though many moments he used to drive me crazy Couple years since I saw you I swear I really hate it The first girl I ever loved cause rumor you amazing I don't tell you that enough but I know you know I feel it Forgive that I've been out of touch but no I miss your spirit I miss the laugh, I miss the jokes Remember how you helped me out when mama took my phone on my PlayStation Promise I always have you back until the day they grave me Moments I came to you crying and only you could save me Like you the older one I can't wait to be the uncle to your older son Or a younger daughter You the pride of Muhammad's heart as his younger daughter You the love of Soha's heart as her younger daughter And the jewel of Islam as his wifey now That's the name of your religion and your hubby now I wish you both the best Wish I could hug on you tonight and tell you you the best But first let me tell you this I love you till my death يا عبيطة مبروك عليك يا وزارة ربنا يخليك البعض Promise you always have a place Older brother every day you can always call on me Older brother every day you can always call on me Shout out to my friend Maya for helping me with the vocals on this shit because I can't sing for nothing, but <laughs> she killed it. Yeah, such, such a great song. It's so heartfelt. Beautiful. Because yeah, I was listening to your other music and as you mentioned, it was like hard and uh, really more rough. More yeah, rough, yeah. yeah. And when I encountered this song, I was like, whoa, this yeah. is a totally different size. But yeah, yeah. Because it also had to be a soft one because for my sister, you know, I don't I don't feel any <laughs> yeah, yeah. anger towards her or whatever. So it was really from the heart. It really like came from a happy place and, a, mm. and like a place of remembrance of what she did and what we went through and all of that. And that's not always the first place I access when I go mm. onto a beat or think yeah. about a song. But yeah. Cool. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for sharing this. I appreciate it. Uh, Maria. Beautiful. <laughs> So your most recent album, Closer, explores a dreamlike feeling, uh, mixing elements of jazz and electronic music. I saw the video of your mom dancing to your song as well. Oh, yeah. Also a heartfelt moment. <laughs> <laughs> Could you elaborate on that as well? What did it do to, do for you? To see uh, I mean, no, this is, uh, it's just my mom. She's uh, she's my, you know, inspiration. Um, she's a, another, you know, fantastic 
creative, creative force. And uh, uh, and sometimes, you know, she's just sending me videos of like, oh, I was very inspired to create oh. this choreography uh, with your music, and I hope you don't mind. And I'm like, please, you know, this is this is amazing. And this is this is again, this is a way of connecting with my family, which is obviously mm. in Italy. And uh, and um, so I feel very very grateful uh, to have this also. Yeah. You know, every now and then these collaborations yeah. uh, with my mom. Yeah. Nice, nice. Uh, do you have a favorite song on the album, and how does that song make you feel, or how did you want people to feel listening to that song? Um. Oh God, it's it's difficult because, uh, like you know, I yes, I do have a favorite song. I do have a favorite song to to to, to play live. A song that every time I'm like, oh God, I'm gonna cry now on stage. <laughs> Uh, um, and it's closer. It's closer. It's it's just it's just like it's the theme of of the album. And uh, uh, I'm talking about live because mm. this is another like uh, you know. And the album in itself is kind of like you know it's my baby, so I'm gonna protect every song. <laughs> 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 but but live definitely like closer. It's uh, I don't know. It creates it creates some some crazy crazy like emotions. You know mm. when I. When I play that live, and uh, probably also because it's it's triggering some memories of where I wrote the song, mm -hmm. I think it's a lot of you know all these experiences I, I was going through in that short amount of time, and I was like, okay, this is you know you know like it, it you know obviously happens is like you know when you just write a song and in in a sh very short amount of time it can be like an afternoon and you're like. Yeah. Oh, that, oh, that's it. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. it. And it's very rare. rare. It's a, it's a rare, it's a rare feeling, you know. Some when you're like, oh, this is, this is it, and uh, uh, yeah. So it's probably closer. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. I, yeah. I think that's a good segue to listen to closer, maybe.
closer. <laughs> I really got lost in the, in the song, which doesn't happen much. I usually focus on the lyrics a lot when I'm listening. That's why I don't like a lot of the new school rap or whatever. But I really got lost with the voice and just the whole wave of it. Really nice. I like so, it. So Thank you. It, did you enter Dream World as well? Not necessarily dream world, but, but it was, I was definitely in the vibe and the wave. It was, it was great. It was, a, it was a good ride. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> nice. So you spent time in Rome and London, two very different music cities. Uh, how does the music scene in each place compare, and how do you think those environments shaped your music? Oh well, I I feel like a Londoner at the moment, and uh, I feel my my voice, uh, um, you know, uh, started completely in London because once again, I had the opportunity. This is like something I'm so grateful. I had the opportunity to share my music, my composition with loads of people in uh, in London. And uh, in Rome, I was, I was a bit too young <laughs> for, for that. But also like the, the industry are completely different um there is um there are some incredible artists coming from uh, uh italy as well more underground artists alternative uh, incredible rich alternative scene it's just a bit harder to get discovered in comparison to to the uk um i'm not saying that the the you know uh uk scene it's it's the industries it's also really really hard but I am I am a little example of someone that if you work hard, you can, you know, kind of, I'm not saying, you know, m make a living out of music uh, uh, in a very, in a very humble way. I am, um, you know, obviously it's London, it's a very expensive city, but you can survive. Okay, that's better for you. You can survive happily. Um, and uh, even though if you didn't, anyway, I didn't have any contacts once I arrived in London. And I think it's a bit more difficult in, in Italy. And that's, you know, I talk with a lot of people and that's what they're telling me, you know, and uh, and also like I play a lot of shows in Italy as well, which I'm super grateful um, to be playing in Italy and reconnect with my, you know, with my roots. And um, it's, it's a different as well, different audience. So I don't know, we in London, we are, and in the UK, because it's not only London, there is an exposure and there always been uh, such a big exposure uh, uh, with, you know, club culture. Um, you know, if you think about BBC Radio 6, it's a huge influence into, into you know, a certain generation and uh, something that maybe we have, smaller radio, we have like smaller kind of, you know, music influencers in Italy, but it's, it will never be mainstream. And here I know so many artists, for example, in the jazz world that are breaking through um, uh, and uh, and they're coming from obviously like, you know, different backgrounds and uh, you don't necessarily have to be, you know, super important contacts. Uh, and uh, and this is this is also like, you know, important. And I feel I feel Italy, it's, it's a bit harder, it's a bit more difficult as a as a music, uh, you know, uh, ecosystem uh, and uh, and it's not impossible but obviously there is also one important thing to be said that is the language so like you have to obviously if you are a singer for example it's it's better if you sing in italian because you arrive more um uh, to the audience you know it's you get again closer to the audience and uh, And there are some uh, 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 Italian artists that are singing in English. It's a bit more niche, and uh, and uh, that's that's for sure. That's 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 why I think it's still very closed in this way. Um, and I mean, you, we, we know like there are you know, UK has always been like rich in terms of like you know uh, uh, music music culture. You have a lot. A lot happening. It's been since forever, and um, said that I'm I'm super like you know the more I go to Italy and this year has been like quite often. I'm noticing that people are you know are curious. They want to explore new things. They're probably bored of the usual uh, stuff uh, that uh, that are mainstream uh, in Italy. Um, and I would say pop 
uh, a certain pop is obviously even here obviously but at least if you're a jazz player I see a lot of you know musicians that are like doing so well and you know touring everywhere and uh, obviously doing so well it's it's always like you mm. know what does it mean nowadays doing so well <laughs> and and how would uh, you oh sorry oh sorry <laughs> no, no. And, and how no. would you describe your music scene uh, I'd say it's it's a bit different from what Maria described. There's uh, in the rap world, there's a lot of need for networking. You see a lot of uh, rap artists who make it, who I would say, for example, don't deserve to be there. We've had examples in mm. the American, uh, like in, in the U.S. rap game, like there was this bug called Six Nine that was on top of the charts for like oh. a long, <laughs> long time. You know, it's just yeah. a lot of. Connections really do matter in the rap world and sometimes they take away opportunities or offer opportunities that are not supposed to be offered. Uh, and when it comes to exposure in the club scene, like she mentioned, that helps a lot. And in Groningen, it's quite easy to get exposure in the club scene there because everyone's connected. You get to meet the DJs, you meet the other party organizers and all of that and that helps when it comes to that. Uh, mm. And then in the north, that can spread a bit easier. Like mm. I started in Groningen, and then uh, word got of me to Leeward somehow, and then I got to perform in Leeward, and it's just the north is quite connected when it comes to that, so that makes it easy. Uh, but uh, surviving out of rap, that's, that's a difficult subject, because it's not as welcome that I'd say and you cannot do a lot like I, I would not be able for example to go perform a cover because I'm a rapper so I have to rap my own things uh. and all of that I, I just do my own stuff and that makes it a bit more from scratch versus I'd say my friends who play instruments they do a lot of performances more but some things they like some things is their original stuff some things they don't like but it still puts food on the table so that's great mm -hmm. but with uh, being just the vocals just the rapper it's a bit more complicated like you need to really look for an accepting stage like uh, I think we were talking earlier and you mentioned like for example a lot of venues closed down in Rotterdam which mm. makes the scene a bit difficult it's also the same kind of see the same in Groningen now when it comes to hip hop and rap to have a rap party or a trap party or whatever a lot of venues are like eh, we're not super sure about that but then on the other hand if a techno party wants to happen then it's straight away mm, yes yeah. so it it does mm. make the scene a bit more complicated but um, if you get the right opportunities at the right times they still helps like ASNS for example is very welcoming of uh, rappers and just vocalists in that sense uh, uh, worked also with Stockerfest in Groningen they always offer a stage for upcoming people over there so you just have to navigate a bit more when it comes to the rap world let's say mm. Um, yeah, I, I would say like obviously you have to navigate also as a producer, yeah. instrumentalist. It's like, but I do find talking to a lot of, of people that it's actually if you are uh, a singer or yeah rapper, it's it's more difficult. Mm. And I think I think what London taught me is like you can be a thousand people all at once, yeah. and you mm. you you can you can make it you know yeah. somehow. Um, so I, I I think it's it's a common. Uh, uh, yeah, it's it's very difficult. It's a common like issue. Uh, if you you produce as well, though, so uh, uh, no, no, I don't have okay. the patience. I just rap, <laughs> I just okay. write and rap. Yeah, uh, my producer friends have been trying to taught me uh, to teach me some of it, but I mm -hmm. just do not have the patience to sit in front of the screen and pick, 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 pick. I I don't. So yeah, only rapper. <laughs> Great. Great, it's good to focus on one thing. It's my issue. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's my, it's my issue. It's my, it's, I'm the opposite. I'm doing too many things, probably. Yeah, but well, that gives you also a lot more room to, like I said, discover yourself in many different situations. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. I think, yeah, it depends also personality to personality, from personality to personality. It's, uh, it's um, for me, it's been, it's been an opportunity to, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm a jazz pianist, sometimes I'm the producer, sometimes I'm the composer, and, mm. and it, it it's it's kind of like uh, feeding my my vision all of this and yeah. collaborating with lots of people and uh, uh, but yeah I hear you I hear you it's uh, it's, it's tough yeah. and you've collaborated a lot both of you is there like a person um, out there that you would love to collaborate with top of mind 
Just <laughs> I, I'm not. I'm not gonna say it because it might not happen if I say it. Oh, wrong, you no? might jinx it. No, okay, okay, <laughs> yeah. okay, okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay, mine are simple. Uh, if I'll ever get to collaborate with Tech Nine because he uh, had yeah. such a great influence on my rap career, and Tech Nine, Lil Wayne, Kendrick Lamar. If I collaborate with any of them, I think I might stop making music after I'm done. I, I made it. It's, it's good. <laughs> You're never done in music. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's time to to listen to your song, ADK. Yeah. Tell us about the song that you chose for us. Uh, yeah, I chose uh, Vicious, which is one of the songs of my upcoming, upcoming album, Pimp Slap. Uh, Vicious was at a stage of my life when I really disliked one thing, which was cancel culture, when it came especially to music. I didn't like that sensitivity was getting heightened and freedom of expression in music at least was also being policed in a sense. And uh, I always view music as a form of expression. I don't view it different than painting or graffiti or whatever it is. It's just a form of expression. But I see sometimes that people are in a museum and they see a very grotesque painting and they go like, wow, I see the beauty in this. Mm. I'm like, music should be judged on the same standard. I'm just a person expressing how I feel. So... This song was me basically giving the middle finger, kind of like the whole album to the music industry and the whole cancel culture. Uh, that's why the hook, as you'll hear it, is just very, I'm just being a dick. And um, that was, yeah, my middle finger to the cancel culture and just to keep that freedom of expression when it comes to music. If you're an artist and you put the effort towards putting something out there, no one should police what you can, can't say, how you present it, how you not present it. You're just giving you mm -hmm. out to the world and that's how I feel about it. So that's Vicious. Vicious by ADK. Now moving forward to the Pimp Slap section, we got Vicious. Them niggas acting like bitches. Bitches acting like hoes. Them niggas acting like bitches. Bitches acting like hoes. Them niggas acting like bitches. Bitches acting like hoes. Them niggas acting like vicious. Now I ain't tryna holler, but you be looking delicious. Eat you then I wash your dishes. Feeling like I'm running out of time a lot. If you really fucking with me, tell me is it right or die? Oh how it's gonna be? Can be dependent on niggas. They keep on feeling me. If I ain't getting the nickel, fuck your apologies My mama always be texting that she be proud of me But I don't see no progress, I don't see no freedom Cash flow, disability, how that nigga need it Stress relief is distractions, maybe you change your scenery And need me lovers, some passion, some dancing in the evening Till the time we no longer tracking and the sun be beaming But lately I've been smoking muscle, I'm away from dreaming But baby, so to speak, ain't all the importance in my eyes Getting super weak, ain't none, none, so to speak, ain't really Bitches acting like hoes, them niggas acting like bitches. Bitches acting like hoes, them niggas acting like bitches. Bitches acting like hoes, them niggas acting like bitches. Bitches acting like hoes, them niggas acting like vicious. Now tell me what you feeling like. Like I should be serving them vengeance for every fucking night. That I stay awake, drugs and honey to ventilate the walls. So I can't forget niggas. Ain't no remember me for many reasons. 20% be impressed, the other 80 be squeamish lately. They gon' end up seeking my blood. Cause a nigga breaking the love if they host the penis. Tragic be my demeanor, too risky to follow leaders. So I'm hurting sheep. Praying on the day I go, they gon' remember me. Never fear competition, I got artillery. Cause you need ammunition with this energy. And yeah, I need me a bitch that come with liquidity. Take it just how you wanna. If I don't die a legend, I'd rather just be immortal. And I don't like to travel, my nigga. Find me a portal, end up in a world evolving. Even snakes act low, you watch you back. Fall for it, and your days might be over. In a minute, what's the motive? Jealousy, have him nauseous and they got Fuck whatever year this is, how I really feel. Nigga, how I really feel. Bitches acting like hoes, them niggas acting like. Bitches acting like hoes, them niggas acting like. Vicious. Applause. <laughs> thank, 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 thank. So cool. Thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. 
So it's clear you don't shy away uh, from talking about heavy subjects in your music. No. Um, how do you manage to stay grounded when working on these subjects or themes or songs? Uh, I think for me is just to try and be as honest as I can with myself. I think uh, when I sit down to write music, I don't try and protect my myself from any images or any thoughts or whatever. I think during a regular day, people make excuses for themselves of why things didn't go a certain way or why some things are happening or they don't take accountability for stuff. When I do my music, I try to take as much accountability. I try to just remove those barriers that I have mm. between whatever, what protects me from other people or anxiety and all of that. And I just let it go and write whatever I'm actually feeling at the moment or how I actually clearly see a certain subject or a certain interaction or past, future, whatever. And I just try to be as clear as water, basically just not not have a mask of ego or a mask of mm. sadness or whatever. I'm just being clear and whatever comes from it comes from it. And how did, do you get in that space? Is, do you have like a ritual or... You smoke a lot, is it? Yes, <laughs> yes. The, 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 my listening ritual, so if I'm listening to an album that I like or whatever, then I have a cup of whiskey and I smoke and I just get into the album. But when I'm writing, I smoke because I don't think uh, drinking helps with the vocabulary much. So I smoke, uh, uh, yeah. get in the zone, and then uh, just talk about however, uh, whatever I want to talk about. But also recently I've realized I don't want to rely on a joint for mm. my expression so now i'm also trying to write sober or just you know get in a studio in the morning and just work without having anything in the system and it's been producing some fun experiments and different also spectrums of emotions and yeah. that's cool so maybe the process will change a bit within the future but until now all the songs that i've wrote i'll just go to the studio smoke a couple chill with the producer and just get to work in a yeah. sense yeah. yeah interesting i really wonder what those different experiences are like having a clear mind yeah, and a yeah, yeah. kind of makes the flow a bit I want to say a bit more difficult because it's just I'm used to being in a higher space when I write let's put it that way but now it's it's a process to get used to but it's not like I forgot how to rap or something I still mm -hmm. can do what I do but it's just a different uh, slight difference in the process and then your brain goes a bit like oh maybe I should roll one up and you're like no relax for a minute and then yeah. Yeah, you carry on. So it's just a little bit of a difference, but I don't think it will change yeah, too much. Too much. What I do, yeah. Cool, cool. Uh, Maria, your music often feels deeply emotional, even when it's instrumental. Uh, how do you maintain a balance between the emotional intensity of your work and taking care of your own mental well-being? I mean, for me, actually, making, making music, it's, uh, it's my way to escape from the craziness. Um, so it's... It can be overwhelming, but it's my, you know, my good place to go every time. I I feel, um, you know, we are living in a very difficult time, and uh, there is a lot of noise. And I'm like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just write a song, and um, it's an answer. It's a, it's a way of escaping. I'm I'm don't overthink it usually. I I literally I let go, and uh, this helps me. Uh, always helped me a lot. And I think composing music, writing music, it's it's my, it's my uh, you know way to. Uh, escape basically a bit uh, somehow escape but also not escape because obviously you are talking about um, uh, you are uh, uh, almost like facing some some realities while you write music and uh, this is on one side and on the other side I actually try to try my best to doing something completely different like you know like uh, going for a walk or like uh, 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 meeting friends parties you know and I love you know electronic music if I can I'm um, just just you know dancing when I can and uh, and um, yeah and not overthinking uh, not um, stressing too much I'm I'm very lucky I'm surrounded by very good people that are always kind of, you know, helping me, you know, balancing out because this music life, it's, it's, it's overwhelming, you know, it, it's crazy. And uh, I just got back from a tour and um, I was basically tour managing myself and it's, uh, it's, it's nuts. It's crazy. And uh, you, you need to be, you need to have a, a balance uh, and, um, 
And I found till now my balance within the music that I'm talking, not the industry, that it's, uh, it, it, can, it can go, it can go. I'm talking about the, the beauty of uh, immersing yourself in the music, which for me is, is, is so powerful for, for this reason, because we, we, I get lost. And when I get lost, I'm not lost. I, found, I find myself uh, each time I get lost, if, if that, that yeah, makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So I can tell by your story that the music industry hasn't been your friend a lot? No, or? no, not at all. Not at, not, not at, no, I'm, I'm a pure, you know, like, no, not at all. I'm a pure observer. Actually, you know, I'm very curious and yeah. I'm exposing myself to, uh, to the music industry. We are exposing everyone, you know, uh, and I'm just observing how at the moment it's completely crazy and uh, everyone is talking about this. Uh, I, was, I was seeing, you know, um, James Blake shared uh, what is happening. If you think about the ticketing uh, uh, and, uh, and you can talk about, you know, and I'm, I'm, I see myself as an observer of the music industry and part of it, I'm also part of it. I need to, I need to, I need to also survive, but I'm doing my best to be um, a, a, good, a good side of it. And I want to help uh, 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 my my friends, my colleagues, to uh, not being kind of uh, you know greedy or uh, or like uh, almost like uh, uh, trapped by the music industry because this is this this acting because this is this is I think is the problem that then is like some people that just see one one way and uh, I'm I'm really like trying every day to build some good relationship within the music industry and there are some incredible beautiful people within the music industry so it's not at all uh, a negative experience I'm just saying the people that then they will decide how this music industry works they're they're not interested in in the actual the power of music you know uh, <laughs> so uh, I I'll stick to the power of music and I'll stick to the good good mates you know and good people that they're really like trying their best to to force this this mechanism which sometimes is not happy and I'm 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 saying that for example like my experience is like um as an independent artist, I'm, I'm doing a thousand things on my own. I've got a team, but I also am doing a thousand things and, and I'm happy, you know, I'm not, I'm not complaining at all. I'm happy because I'm, I'm learning where, you know, what is wrong with it. Uh, it's, it's a relationship. So obviously every relationship, it can go, you know, uh, wild, wrong, uh, it's good, bad, it's sad. And, uh, it's just at the moment, I think, I feel like the, the need of uniting a bit more with mu musicians that they really feel the need of uh, change in the music industry. I feel also a person that I want to talk more. Some people, they don't talk a lot about some issues, you know, they don't talk about some... Um, yeah, like sometimes it happens. And this is the, the thing. If you expose yourself, and I've been exposing myself a lot in the last... 10 years, I do a lot of things, you're obviously gonna, something is gonna happen, you know, <laughs> that is not, it's not good uh, or it's not a good experience and, uh, but it's part of the process. So what I'm saying is like there is not a bad industry, it's just like it's part of the process to understand that at this, in this moment, there, we need a change. Um, we need to cooperate, we need to uh, team up and uh, and trying to 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 you know help each other a bit more, I would say. Maybe do do strike like the actors did in America and the screen. Yeah, the, the I, right. I, I, <laughs> yeah. I always wonder. I always wonder why we are not going. You know, like we're not uh, doing that. I don't know. I, there is there are some some things. I'm I'm. I don't know. We are. We, I feel like we are scared. You know, we're more scared of of. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But it, it would be great, you know. Let's team up. Let's uh, <laughs> let's uh, you know strike. <laughs> I think it's a mix of like hope and fear because we're like, hey, we hope one day we'll be discovered by the music industry. So let's not run our mouth too mm. much right now. So the future executive that might have given us a chance doesn't say no further on, I guess. But 
yeah, uh, stuff does need to change 100%. It became like more of a number focused game and mm-hmm. the more focus on the art went away, which is what I see, especially like in the hip hop community. Like sometimes I show my friends a new artist and they go like, yeah, but like how many listeners does he have? Yeah, yeah. No one cares. Like it should be just based mm-hmm. on the art that he's doing. Do you like this song or not like this song? Not exactly. this popularity mm-hmm. contest of how many followers on Instagram or how many TikTok likes you have. or Because I find that cringe. Like I love making music. I like performing. I like writing, I like recording. My favorite part's performing, but now that I have to be on TikTok acting mm, a certain type of way creator. to promote my song yeah. and be a content creator and go do pranks just to get the exposure, I don't like that much. Like, it's really, for me, I feel like it kills the art a bit or the spirit of mm. the art, of the power of music, like she said. It's just all these extras that need to be done with no specific purpose just to appeal to... Whatever is popular nowadays, that's that. Yeah, kills the scene a bit for me. Yeah, and even what's popular today has, it's been dictated or has been dictated by like bigger powers uh, rather than it really being popular just because it's good music or yeah, yeah, yeah. The industry plant syndrome, but that's yeah, that's a long <laughs> story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Do you both have any tips for upcoming artists? What, what? <laughs> yeah. 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 Maria, you can yeah. start. Yeah. I mean, some people that say don't do it, I say do it. Because yeah. <laughs> it's it's because uh, it's amazing. It's it's honestly, I I feel in you know, it's it's hard, mm-hmm. but it's an amazing journey of uh, self discovery and uh, actually seeing the beauty of who we really are as a human mm. being and uh, and all this industry obviously like talks is like of course like uh, this is this is, needs to be fixed and uh, it's important to talk but for me it's also very important to encourage uh, the new generations and say like listen there is also this other world uh, which is beautiful and uh, you can make art obviously it's not easy journey you mm-hmm. need to sacrifice a lot there are a lot of uh, uh, you know, sacrifices that every artist has made. You know, the, the fact that I moved out of my country and I'm, you know, it's it's crazy, uh-huh. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I had to rechange completely my kind of, uh, you know, what I thought I was gonna do, be or whoever. Like when I was a kid, you know, and uh, and um, it's 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 amazing though, and it's rewarding. And my suggestion. Uh, this is my experience is don't uh, go too fast. It's like enjoy the process because this is a process and, uh, you know, eventually, uh, you know, and don't put massive goals like when you mm. are like, you know, 16 years old. Yeah. What I'm saying, enjoy the process that it's so beautiful to literally like, okay, what I'm doing today, oh, I'm, I'm meeting with an incredible rapper in the studio and I'm focusing on the music and I'm going to do the best possible take and uh, the best possible production with this incredible singer, for example. Mm. And uh, and that's already like, oh, I, I'm winning here. I'm mm. doing what I love. That's why I'm saying it's, I really want to inspire and encourage uh, uh, musicians and especially female musicians, which it's it's so important because uh, we feel always, uh, you know, uh, kind of, uh, you know, it's hard. It's difficult. It's difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I would say, like, do it. <laughs> yeah, that, I, I agree to that. Uh, another thing I would like to advise, especially for the younger generations coming up, I see it in rap a lot and hip hop. Don't try and be cool, just be you. Like, you don't mm-hmm. always have to be the person with the Glocks and the person with the cars when you don't have no cars. Like, see a lot of trying to appeal to the society by being this nonchalant, super cool person. But when you sit down with some of the younger people and you actually talk to them about what they're going through, what they're feeling, it's a lot deeper, but then they choose to be popular or because that's what's popping nowadays to only give out that super superficial level of what they are or what they're not and just you know just be you express yourself Mm -hmm. do what you feel that you need to do not what the homies think are cool not what the 
social media or TikTok as a school, like discover your own self and make your own journey. And you're much more likely to be seen by doing you rather than doing what the other 1,500 people in the city are doing, right? So it's just try to figure out that path for yourself. And uh, also within the rap community, I see a lot of people choosing like path A or path B. It's like either I'm going to be a rapper, so I got to drop out of high school. You don't have to. You can oh, also okay. like, you know, yeah. just, just work on both. It is a difficult journey. Nothing is guaranteed in the music world. Maybe one month you're a millionaire, the second month you have nothing. So just always have something to go back to like you don't have to quit your education it doesn't have to be a choice of yeah i need to be this right now you can always do stuff in peril and then see what works out for you because you still need to survive in the world rather than just you know smoke weed all day and quit school and quit being social just mm. to make this rap career happen we're not at this stage and i think we're also in a country that provides a lot of benefits and a lot of opportunities so try to use those you don't have to let go of life to be a rapper or go through intense struggle just you know do what you can until you can make it one day yeah i think uh, that's a good rap for now thank you for your great advice and f yeah just for sharing Your stories, uh, Maria, ADK. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Before we go, where can our listeners follow you online and find you online and keep up with your latest projects? Maria, uh, you go first. <laughs> no, you go first. No, no, please, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can find me on Instagram at i.m.adk and uh, find me also on Spotify under a.d.k, ADK. And all the links are available on Instagram. Check it out. New album is coming soon in a couple of months. And yeah, thank you guys for having me here tonight. I had a great time. Enjoyed the speech and talking to both of y'all. Yeah. Are you Maria? Uh, yeah, you can find me on Maria, uh, Chiara Argiro, everywhere, Argiro, everywhere. Uh, Maria underscore Chiara underscore Argiro on Instagram, Spotify, Bandcamp, I would say. Mm. Bandcamp, go follow me on Bandcamp because it's, uh, it's a good place. My website, everywhere else because we are everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> And will, will you be performing in the Netherlands anytime soon? Um, I performed actually last, uh, when was it? Last year, but hopefully in uh, next year, something something should be planned. Um, and this right. is, a, yeah, it's a, is part of uh, yeah the tour. So fingers cool. crossed. And I played actually twice in Groningen, which is oh, okay. uh, incredible. Yeah, oh, yeah. damn. Next time you come to Groningen, I'll be there yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely. Did yeah. you play for Eurosonic? Or? Eurosonic and also like a uh, Rocket. This um, festival, um, very very cool festival. Yeah, uh, yeah. Nice, nice. Well, thank you very much. There you have it. The, the episode with ADK and Maria. I'm I'm a bit afraid to just <laughs> mention, pronounce say your full it, name. Say it. Say it. <laughs> ah, Go with the flow. Go with the flow. Maria Chiara Argiro. You are the perfect, perfect, okay. perfect. Hey, that's the perfect per ending. Perfect pronunciation, <laughs> amazing. Thank cool, you. Thank you. So don't forget to check out the music and check out our podcast as well. Uh, a special thanks to our sponsors. Poppodium Vera, Kunstraad en Gemeente Groningen, uh, Mojo Dojo, Stichting Frequency. And uh, see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.